first appointment, traveling for some well-deserved rest and relaxation, or returning home as you end your tour of duty. Thank you for your service. We appreciate all you do for our nation. I'm trying to walk them through. Getting this connected. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me, Jim? Yes, sir. Okay, so between you and I, we can have a meeting. Now, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Can I say something? Yep. Can you hear me? I said record. <laughs> You're, uh, you are recording. And uh, I can hear you. Jim can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Unmuted. Jim, can you say yeah, something? Can... Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Oh, no. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, okay, ten. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. I'm, send, I'm sending them a picture of what they need to turn on. Um, so, Sue, would you want to have one on your phone, one on my phone? Irene, so if you Peter, can hear me, I don't have check, this check, thing on my phone. Check, check your cell phone, please. Phone. If you can hear me, check your cell phone. Oh, could you know? I apologize, everyone. Both Jim and Peter obviously are remote. So so turn that on. It's on. It's on. We did. We did. We did that. So now it's on now. I can hear you, Irene. Uh, they have the microphones on, but they didn't have the speakers, speakers on. Speakers are plugged in, I guess. Everything's not power. You have the same problem when I was trying to join remotely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can, you just go? can I have Peter pull your cell phone then? And we could put them. Hey, give me a second. So I'm asking Jim to call my cell and asking Peter to call your cell. Right. If you don't hit the mode button. Oh god, where's the mode button? Where? <laughs> This is what happened when you have no one under the age of 50 sitting up here. No, Colin, sorry, sorry, I said Colin. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. take over. Yeah, do you, do you know how to do this? <laughs> I'll, I will call Peter again. That's <laughs> what he's been with us. Yeah. Watching the struggle. I think you're drinking. Uh, he said hit the mode button. Oh, wait, wait. He circles. Oh. Anything? 
Can you hear us now? Thank you. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello? It's, in, it's on the wrong input. Wow. <laughs> no. It's that person open. You put it on the stereo or you put it on the speaker. You have selected it. He is doing Hi. Um, how about if I put you on speakerphone through my phone? <laughs> so Jim and Peter are the only ones that are unmuted. The speakers are on the wrong input. It should not say aux. What should it say? What should it say? Phono. Oh, Phono oh, or input one? It says LD. LD. If you hit the mode button, what does it say? I have aux, not aux, right? Nope. And then it says uh, 87.5. 87.5. And it says L-O-D. L-O-D. And blue. And blue. <laughs> blue is Bluetooth. No. So would be L-O-D then? Try it. Well, that's, that's, all, that's our only options. So both Jim and Peter are unmuted on here. So. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Put there. Um, what, it says web OS. Headset microphone. It is a headset microphone. Select yeah. speaker. Go back there, Irene. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? It is. Mm -hmm. This is so frustrating. Do you need to check about the TV speakers? Web OS? Click Web OS and turn up the volume. Okay. Where's the volume? The TV is right there. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear us now? Say something. Hello. 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 Hey, everybody. We do exist. Can you hear me? I, I was just on the phone with Sue, and she could hear you. So, Sue, I'm going to ask you to do one thing real quick for me, if you can hear me. Give me a sign. Okay. So, if you were pushing buttons, I, we can't hear you now. We could hear you before. Did you change the microphone on Zoom? Because it should still be the headset, micro, or headset uh, speaker microphone. Here. Okay, did you say something? Because I, I heard something there. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? I heard Colin very distantly, I think. Hello. Hello. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Ready? Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Sue and Irene, I'm going to trouble you to do one more thing. Okay. There's, there's a little piece of software down in the bottom tray called OBS. Full screen that for me. What? 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 Down in the uh, down in the yeah. taskbar. Yeah, we yeah. got it. There's a it's a little logo that has like a, a circle with some lines spinning towards the center like a drain. We got it. Okay. Yeah. Once that's maximized, on the lower right hand, there's a thing that says stop virtual camera. Okay, uh, now hit start virtual camera. Okay. Okay. You there? Can you yeah, see it's, uh, no, we actually can't see you, unfortunately. Um, it's still stuck on what appears to be planning commission. Yeah. So, 
I'll have to look at it because I think somebody might have been touching stuff. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's it's okay. We can we can do it without visuals. Sound is the important part. Yeah, Jim, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Cool. Let's, okay. Let's keep going with it then. All right. So I am just going. No, because no. No, we don't. Oh, no, 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 no. How do we minimize it? Yeah, the only thing, Irene, if you want to do in Zoom, you can actually pick a different camera from the little camera drop down. Pick the Poly Studio Bar. I don't know how to get out of this. But oh, so just, just yeah. minimize it. Just yeah. minimize it. Okay. Okay. And we've got a good visual on you. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, if for whatever reason you're stuck, like the, the yeah. video feed froze. Um, okay. So all you have to do is in Zoom next to the little camera icon, there's like an up carrot. Pick pick the uh, the camera to be the Poly Studio USB. Okay. USB. Studio. Hey, there you go. We can see you now. Okay. Okay. Great all right. Tomorrow. Okay. Are we ready to start the meeting then? We we, we are ready to start the meeting. Let's rock and roll. Call the meeting to order. It's currently 7.14 p.m. Oh, 7.17. Excuse me, 7.17 p.m. Uh, let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I show allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I apologize. I do have the, I do have the tendency to speak fast. Sue is going to have to help me keep tempo tonight. So if you think I'm too fast, just ask me to slow down. Uh, meetings are being uh, audio and video recorded. We hope. <laughs> Please silence your cell phone. Uh, masks and hand sanitizer are available at the uh, front here. Uh, let's. Uh, Approve the minutes of March 25th, 2023 workshop meeting. A motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. Is there a second? Yes. Is that Irene? Yes. Okay. On a roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, so there's a little delay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the March 30th, 2023 Board of Supervisors meeting. Is there a second? Second. Jim? On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay. There was no uh, April 22nd workshop meeting because due to lack of quorum. Uh, Treasurer's report, which is me. Uh, just want to inform you guys, we received a uh, recycling grant um, uh, funds, which um, neither of us, well, Sue and I weren't really expecting. We must have filed for it sometime last year. So we received just under $22,000. So that was kind of nice to receive that. Um, apparently, when Sue and I were, were we're talking about the requirements that we needed to meet in order to having had to apply to the funds, for, excuse me, for the grants. We didn't really realize that uh, we had actually had complied with it. So uh, just to FYI, that was erroneously deposited into our road district funds. So we're going to see that balance reflected for uh, the May um, financials because I had to go to the bank and transfer the funds into uh, the general fund. So you're gonna see a decrease in the road district fund by $22,000, a little less than $22,000 and see the jump in the uh, general fund. So that was a nice little chunk of change that we weren't necessarily expecting. Um, we did receive the liquid fuels fund again because the accounts are balanced at the end of the month. You're gonna see a liquid fuels deposit for about $98,000, a little bit over that in the liquid fuels fund. Um, as of next month, but those funds have been deposited. So just to make you guys aware of that, it's kind of nice to see that uh, recycling grants. Um, other than that, uh, nothing unusual to report. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the payments of the bills for April, 2023. Second. 
on a roll call. Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Anyone that wishes to address the board can do so by coming up to the microphone. Please state your name and address. Beverly Rossman, 412 Water Street, Stassburg, PA 19567. I haven't been at the last couple of meetings for personal reasons, but uh, what is happening with the, the roads as far as stop signs and that in town? The reason I'm asking is a few days ago when I wanted to pull out up here at the stomp sign, there was a car almost all the way to the curb and I had to pull almost all the way out before I could see if there was a car coming to the left. And if I wouldn't have had my mind on my road, um, we would have I would have collided with another car. Um, I know when I was a young person, um, they used to have um, the yellow signs there. I'm sorry, my son's in the hospital. So you take the call, Beverly. It's okay. Yeah, we can we can circle back to that. Yeah. So anyone else uh, for public announcements? Public comments. Okay. Um, an executive so, session was held after the March 30, 2023 Board of Supervisors meeting to discuss personnel issues from 9.45 to 10.30 p.m. I forgot, you know, do either one of you guys have an agenda in front of you? I, I do, but I, Irene, uh, real yes, quick, ma'am. just so for the record, we have Thomas Folk and Brandon Sweeney also oh, on the okay. Zoom. Um, I'm not seeing anything up on my screen. Do you have something there? You, you have to hit the little participants button. Oh. There's uh, the two little two little people. Okay. I'll unmute Brandon. Does Brandon, do you have something that you'd like to add to public comments? Uh, he hasn't done anything in the chat, so it's, no, it's I'm good. That he doesn't okay. Thank you for joining. Would you, is there anything you wanted to add to public comments? Uh, he said he was good. Well, yeah, I mean, while, while I'm unmuted, I'll, I'll just ask, uh, yeah. um, <clears throat> what is the process to hold the trash company accountable for not honoring their contract on multiple occurrences? So the, the correct process would be call in, report it to Sue, and then when we have complaints, we can uh, see if it's something that we can exercise the, the penalties that are outlined in the contract. I know, Irene, you had a, a similar set of things about recycling, non-performance on recycling the past couple of weeks. Correct, correct. And I thought that when we renegotiated the contract, we had asked them to include robocalling out to the residents when they didn't um, pick up uh, either trash or recycling. I didn't receive a robocall. I live on the same street as Brandon. Did you guys have your uh, trash picked up and recycling trash picked up on, the, on uh, Tuesday or was it delayed? Everyone's, uh, everyone's the, the, the trash was Tuesday. The recycling got picked up uh, this afternoon. Is that similar? Everyone else in the room? Okay. Yeah, so we need to take a look at the contract once again and see what was included in the new renewal as far as their responsibility for um, responding to residents because I thought that we had included robocalling, but I don't want to misspeak without actually having reviewed the contract that we renewed with them. Yeah, let's double check the contract, but yeah. before we go any sort of litigation route, let's give them a phone call and a letter and say that we want, we expect better performance. And if there's a situation like they have people that are out sick, things happen, we understand that, but we need to be properly notified, even if it's at the township level, but preferably at the resident level, that something is sent right. out as a robo-dialer. All right, unfortunately, we were... Um, notified at the township level. An email was sent because I had uh, called into the office and sent a text message to Stu, but that doesn't do anyone good in town because no one knows yeah. unless they call in. So Exactly. Um, so yeah. let's, so let's I, check the contract and see if we can push politely at first on it, but if we have to push harder, let's make sure that we have feet to stand on when we shove. Right. Yes, thank you for your comment, Franzen. Uh, Mr. Falk, did you have any comments? No, not right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, and anyone else uh, would like to make, please come up to the podium. Oh. I stopped the truck on um, 
What's your name and your address, please, for the record? Lee Dice, 1117 William Penn Boulevard. I stopped the truck down over the hill on Tuesday because the trash was blowing off the roof and uh, spraying all over the place. So I did stop the driver. It's on record with the company because they have uh, cameras on there now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Beverly, did you want to continue? Uh, yeah, uh, I was just wondering if the lines couldn't be different at where you pull out, because even up at Brubaker's a couple of days ago, I had the exact same thing. There's no visibility. You have to pull front so far. And if those cars are going faster than they're supposed to, somebody's going to get hurt really bad. But like I said, I wasn't at the meeting, so I don't know when you're gonna, where you're going to put stop signs or whatever you are planning. But I thought I'd bring those two in, two places up. It's very dangerous. Was your vision obscured because it's parked car? Mm -hmm. yes. And at what intersection was that again? Right up here, when you go to pull out, at, they had the car at up. Motor Street and, and Main. Mm -hmm. And then the one, I forget, it's Church. Church, yeah. Church to Main. Okay. Yeah. We, yeah. Had the, we had the traffic studies done last year, and we did not meet criteria for stop signs, unfortunately. And so the crosswalks that are painted there now, I had a hard time visualizing them as crosswalks. I guess maybe I'm just used to the ones with the stripes. There's just the two single lines. So when we do have the line painting for next year, I'd like to make the request that they actually put in the thick white stripes in between. And we could probably put other signage indicating that there's a crosswalk ahead. Uh, Peter, I know we had discussed that previously. So, and you had talked about getting collars. Yeah, so yeah. Irene, we're, we were going to get the bollards. Um, the original order that I placed, they sat on it for a while, and I think they canceled it. Might have been a stocking situation. Oh, okay. And I'm trying, yeah, and I'm trying to find ones of similar price because the rest of them were, were far more expensive. But okay. the long-term game plan, like you said, we unfortunately can't do stop signs. That would have been ideal, but would be to, to paint in the lines, like Irene, you were saying, so that the crosswalks themselves are more visible. Um, the the double white is a standard crosswalk, but there's other places more commonly like New York City, Philadelphia, things like that, that utilize the, the zebra bars. Um, we can put them in, we can put the bollards in, and the other thing is we can paint the, the no parking zones that are the 25 feet from the, the crosswalk. Yes. Um, there are people that do not respect the fact that you cannot park within that zone. So maybe a, a little visual aid might help at the, the location so that we have something cross hatched there as well as a, a do not park. And I believe, and Chuck, keep me honest, that does comply with the, the PennDOT standards for road marking because it is a standard use. Yeah, you could, you could put more striking there as well as, you know, yeah. an active parking restriction in that right. zone and sign it accordingly. And on the yeah. curves, we could paint it the bright you yellow. Paint the curves yellow okay. too. That was so we have yellow paint. If not, it's not that okay. expensive. We can get it. Yeah, yeah. And, and the stop bars, you're saying, the, the big wide stop bar. You're, are you saying the location of that needs to be adjusted too? No, it's okay. just no. It's okay. the, so you've got the you've got the two lines across the street. I right. want to, to to horizontally cross hatch that like you would see in like yeah. a, a bigger city. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Water. Yeah. yeah. I, honestly, because um, until I drove around and started noticing other crosswalks, I was like, I didn't even realize that that was an indication for a crosswalk. I guess I'm just used to the standard canopies, as you call it. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you. So we are we are still working on it, but thank you for your input on that because we, we do know that the, the visibility at the corner of Water and Main is not ideal. We were really so we hoping get... that that traffic study would come back and allow us to put a stop sign in there because that would just be yeah. perfect. Yeah. So there's not enough traffic on Water Street. Probably no, the there isn't. There's, there's there isn't. On Main so Street. so we could get the proper uh, distance from the curb to know where we could mark it with yellow paint and then. Do the piano keys yeah yeah the other thing would be you know the material whether you paint the stop bars or the crosswalks or do you use uh, the thermal plastic which will last a lot longer it's more expensive initially but, but it will last longer. longer and you won't be repainting it every two years okay so. if you could so get us something, pricing something to yeah think about with that because i know they're i think i'm sorry no we're, we're, 
Well, the yellow paint is <laughs> only curves. curves and so forth. Yeah. Anything in the, on the pavement, yeah. if you use thermal plastic, it's, you know, that's heated and it can really, really melt into the road. No, but there's usually, uh, and I know there, I thought there was a, the county contract or something for line striking, but that might just be long. I think so. Um, but, you know, you could contact, you know, a, a company that does that and have them come out and do it for you. You know, you could paint the yellow curves and, yep. and so forth, but, um, you know, even the gore striping, you know, that's pretty precise line paint work. So there's a, a machine, a sprayer that, that would put that down. Thank you. Uh, I, I think we really Yeah. Yeah, I would say we could we could probably easily do the curbs, but the any of the road markings we'd want to have somebody do that professionally. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Too. Yeah. Uh, I guess Peter, would you be able to go out with Butch at some point and demarcate the curbs so this yeah. way you get out there, paint yeah. it, have the guys do that as soon as possible. That would help. Yeah. 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 Maybe an ordinance to strict parking there mm -hmm. so the police can yeah. enforce it. Yes. And yep. tickets. Yes. The um the no parking uh, and I'll gladly defer to Colin on this, but when we posted the first couple of those signs, we had actually checked with Andy, and Andy had indicated that there was no ordinance needed because it already is uh, supporting uh, essentially a Pennsylvania level law of not parking a certain number of feet between the crosswalk and like I think it's like twenty five feet in from a crosswalk or something like that. But yeah. I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to do an ordinance if we have to do an ordinance to make it right. Yeah. Well, you want well, it just, I, just so you can enforce it. Yeah. I, I, ideally, you want your local police department to be citing to local ordinances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. that's fine. So let's we'll map out all the signs and make sure that there's an ordinance tied to it. And that and that Peter, what Andy said is likely true, but you know. Local police officers aren't necessarily familiar with the vehicle code regulations. Okay, that's fair. And of course, if we have signage, it reinforces it as well. Yep. And people are aware. And so there's the notice aspect, even though no notice is required. So, so okay, thank you. So we, we'll be working on that, Butch, if you'll help out with everything. Thank you. Are we okay to continue then, the next item? Do we, do we want to amend the agenda to have... A no parking sign ordinance listed. Um, Peter, let's, would you? Well, let's just put that on the books to have a no parking ordinance for next meeting. Like yeah. we don't have, we don't have to do anything with it now. I, honestly, I don't think there's really going to be anything we can do with it now, other than agree mm -hmm. that we need an ordinance. I mean, you could always, you know, paint it, mark it, comment, and then follow and the, up for the next meeting. Yeah. Thereafter. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Colin. Sure. <laughs> Are we ready to proceed then? You okay, Jim? Yeah. All right. Uh, next item for discussion, uh, the May Planning Commission meeting. I'm sorry, what did I miss? I did that before. Did you? It's okay. I apologize, Sue. Thank you. You're keeping me good. Sorry. All right. Um, the May Planning Commission needs to be rescheduled. It's currently scheduled for May 16th, which is Election Day, uh, because the municipal building is a polling site. No other activities should take place in the building. The planning commission members are agreeable to change it to Wednesday, May 17th at 730, and we'll need to make the motion to change that. So I'll make the motion to change the planning commission meeting to Wednesday, May 17th at 730 p.m. Oh, a second. And, and authorize the secretary to advertise the change in the meeting. I'll, I'll second that. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. And, and one note there, you know, I don't know that we have anything for the there planning commission at this no. time, so you'll hold off on advertising until something comes in. So I just, just need to give save the legal 24 expenses. hours notice, correct? Correct. Yeah, so I'll wait until right before. <laughs> On the same uh, or similar note, the May workshop meeting is also scheduled on um, Sorry, May 20th. on May 20th. So we need to reschedule that as well. And so those, yeah. Those advertisements just
I apologize. Do we have? I, I can't yeah. hear Colin, so I'm not sure what what's going on. So we need to we need to reschedule the uh, the workshop meeting, right? I was just explaining to Sue that she should explain that the meeting has been rescheduled in the advertisement due to a lack of a quorum. Okay. So for the May 20th meeting that we need to cancel because of the car show, is there another date that we had in mind? And that's the workshop meeting. Do we want to do it the, the week before the car show? I don't, uh, let me see. I don't think I have a problem with that. So we have the 13th. Would you guys like to move that to May 13th then? I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. Jim, any issues? I'm looking. Uh, I will be out of town. I don't have my work schedule in front of me, so I'm not quite sure at this point if I would be available either. Well, we can either have you join remote, or as long as Irene and I are there, we have at least quorum, so we'd be able to continue. Yeah, I, I won't even have access. That's my my grandson uh, graduates from college that day. Oh, then, oh. then don't <laughs> then don't worry about it. Um, I mean, we can we can do it another night, or we can cancel the workshop meeting. It's I, I apologize. I don't have my May schedule in front of me. So what's your preference, guys? Do you want to cancel it? I mean, if we don't, if there's too many variables on the table, if we know Jim isn't going to be around because he's got right. commitments and you, your, your work schedule is still to be decided, I yeah. would say it's probably in everyone's best interest to cancel it and put the notification out there as soon as possible. Okay. Do we need to advertise a cancellation of a meeting? No. 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 Okay. Does thank it, you. No. But we can at least put signs up and things like that. So. Okay. Okay. So. I would just move to cancel that. Okay. So I'll make the motion to cancel the May 20th workshop meeting. Second. Second. On a roll call. Uh, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. So next item for discussion is a sewage planning module for possible Mangot subdivision. This property is located at the northwest corner of 422 and Marion Drive. Uh, the Mangots hope to subdivide this property into two lots. The soils currently will not allow a septic system to be installed, therefore they need a holding tank. Um, we've had holding tanks on other properties that can't accommodate septic systems. So um, we'll be getting sewer ones. I'm sorry, Sue, they, they will be getting sewer. Okay, so that, so that property they're, will be served. They're, yeah. they're so in the plan development area. Even the subdivided property one? I'm sorry? They're both so things are in split. the plan development area. Okay, so both lots would be would have access to it. Um, we need to make a motion to allow for the component one sewage planning module. Any problems with that with you, Jim? No. Okay. Yeah, I don't have I'll any make objections. Motion. I'm sorry? I, I have no objection to that. Okay. I was just about, if you weren't going to do it, I was going to make the motion. So oh, That's okay. I'll make the motion to adopt the Component 1 Sewage Planning Module for the Mangot Subdivision. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Yeah, Colin, please keep me good on any of these motions. Of I course. appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Just one follow-up question. There was uh, a maintenance agreement for commercial holding tank mm -hmm. for this property that was signed uh, August last year. Mm -hmm. Was that for the existing dentist office? No. Or did that include, or was no, that for that this? this that was for this mm -hmm. potential subdivision. Mm -hmm. okay. Because the other part of the property, doesn't that have septic on it? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Uh, next item, uh, with sadness, uh, our current SEO, Alan Madeira, um, will be resigning. Um, he will not be accepting any new work after May 31st of 2023, but will be uh, available to finish any work that he already had begun until August of 2023. Um, unfortunately, we need to make a motion to accept his re resignation with regret. So, Effect effective. Um, he um, this day and said he's not gonna leave us high and dry um, he will continue to do our sewage maintenance management program if we want him to till the end of the year. Um, but everything else, SEO wise, he is resigning from. Should, should we accept his resignation yeah. contingent upon 
appointing a new SEO. Cool. Colin, what I was going to suggest and keep me level set here would be we accept his resignation with regret to discontinue services as of the end of the year, December 31st, or until such a time as we appoint a replacement. Whichever comes first. Whichever comes first. Okay. I'll second that motion. That was, well. And on a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Yeah. Um, we did get a proposal from <clears throat> SDE. And absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Are you with Hydrotech? Yeah can, yeah, can you give us a, a recap? We couldn't hear Kim. I'm assuming that was Kim talking. I have to come up to the mic. Yeah. Um, I'm Kimberly DeRose with Hydroterra Professionals. I was asking if um, details could be made um, available for submitting a proposal. So if this is a um, request for services, if we could see what the parameters are, so you could have um, a couple of firms, perhaps. Yeah, abso absolutely. We'd be delighted to receive a proposal from Hydroterra. Yeah. yeah. Are you, is your office local? Um, we are based right outside of Morgantown, so. Um, that would be the only thing I can In responding to their request for SEO services, mm -hmm. we provide a great schedule for performing various tasks. Um, so with that drive distance, that might be difficult for you, you know, just to make it worthwhile, but I could say, yeah, have at it. Just um, by, by yeah. way of background, I don't know if you're aware, but Hydroterra is the township sewer. And yeah, you're right, yeah. right, working yeah. on the sewer project. Yeah, yeah. I just meant, you know. Right, in terms of in for, on, the, on the ground, being yeah. the ground director. Right, right, right. it's so different. Just, yeah. Like, sure. But yeah, have at it, because, mm -hmm. you know, right now, we submitted a uh, proposal for the sewage enforcement office of services. However, I don't know that we could take on the sewer management program, too. That and so if you're able to do both, then maybe that would be more advantageous for the township. Yeah, I think it's okay. it's going to be very important to do both. Like we yeah. definitely need some some yeah. firm or entity managing the sewer management program. There's, right. there's a lot that goes into that to make that work right. I yeah. just know right now, staffing-wise, it would be tough for us to take that on. Yeah. But that, that could change coming forward. So I'll keep mm -hmm. you posted on that or before you make a final decision. Thank you. We yeah, and we've had other individuals call in that are interested, but it's the sewage man management program, which is at the core of what we really need. And, and yeah. Alan did a wonderful job with mm -hmm. establishing it. So, And as I understand, that program is simply the SEO is on any given site when the septic systems are being pumped. Mm -hmm. So just to verify that they are indeed being pumped instead right. of having the haul or submit documentation. Yeah, it's, right. uh, it's right. them, All the them being the, to be submitted. Yeah, it's, the, it's the inspection at the time of the correct forms and the underlying management of making sure that people are pumping out at the right durations and that if somebody doesn't do it, that they're followed up with to make sure that they, they do ultimately do that. Yeah. And do you know how many systems are being pumped and how often? Uh, it's uh, once every it's four, on, it's, four <laughs> years. Uh, but how, how many how many trips? How many how many to, to sites are there? Well, how many sites are there? How many septic systems are there? Was it seven hundred and fifty something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we sent out we sent out all the letters last year. I want to say it was under eight hundred. Okay. Um, but we had quite a bit. And no, no, those, those are the amounts of residents. Well, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. If memory serves me, I think there's about 650 or 660 properties. It's like actual dwellings in the township. Okay. Okay. I don't know what that was. I don't know how many of them. I think very few of them are um, on anything other than public sewer. 490 by my calculation. So just about 500. So because we had sent out, like, we sent out a, a, a lot of letters I know because I think we sent out close to 800 letters at the mm -hmm. time so Alan had established a letter explaining the program explaining the timetable mm -hmm. uh, explaining why we need to be compliant and basically there was a map on it It was very useful so we were hoping that residents would see this as an official letter be able to hang it up if they need to to remind them over 
the compliance issue. So, yeah. So I would say roughly about 500 locations. You in contact with Alan. That would be, yeah, for, yeah. for everyone involved. Yeah. Just to yeah. know the details, yeah. because like you said, the capabilities and what have you, it's, yeah. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah. So we've had a couple of other people call in. And so it's the sewage management program itself is what, what it hinges on. And we've had, uh, in the past, we've had a, a primary and a secondary SEO as well. Okay. So, yeah. all right. Everyone okay to move on? Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, let's continue. Okay. Act 537, the SEO is doing inspections in the Northwest and East Districts. Hydroterra professionals submitted a sewer design comparison, which provides conceptual costs for gravity, low pressure versus pumping, um, stating the alternative plan of low pressure only. Um, Joe Boldaz would like us to authorize him to do soil analysis. This will help him to determine if there is any bedrock along the sewer route. He uh, contacted DEP to schedule a meeting, but is waiting for a response. After the meeting with the DEP, we can schedule the special meeting slash town hall. And attorney uh, Andy George is working on a draft of the new intermunicipal agreement with the WSA. So, uh, did Peter, did you want to break out any of that as far as the agenda goes? Is there no, anything further you want to comment? I would like to, to add is that the, the, the soil sampling yeah. okay. is the next step in the, the Act 537 roadmap that we have to adhere to. For, for good, bad, or indifferent, it is the next step that we have to do. And we did get some grant money as, as part of that LSA submission. So we need to have Hydroterra begin doing the soil analysis because um, that's going to be particularly telling. If they find a lot of rock or other similar obstructions, that's going to make a very favorable argument for the, the low pressure system rather than the traditional gravity. So I'll make a motion to authorize Hydroterra to begin soil analysis. Second. Oh, wait. Um, very quickly, it would be, I think, more technically geotechnical or environmental, um, just to be aware, because it would be boring just okay. to make sure we don't hit the rock. Do we, so you want to okay. so, Well, I was just about to ask if Sue and Linda, if the statement Kim made, if I can amend my statement to include her wording as part of the amend of, amendment for uh, the geo and uh, environmental. Technical and environmental. Thank you, Kim. There's a lot of background here. <laughs> <voice here. laughs> Awesome. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Do you want an update on where things stand with the intermunicipal? I don't. We, Andy and I finished the draft of that agreement a while ago. Okay. It was um, later on the agenda, and I think I copied you. There's a Residential development being proposed right. partially in Marion Township and they're kind of counting on, mm -hmm. um, I guess, some reserved sewer capacity that will be purchased by Marion Township in, in bulk that then they could utilize to provide sewer service for this development. My hypothesis is perhaps WSA is waiting to get back to us on the agreement until the township decides what type of system okay. that it wants to okay. implement. I don't know that for sure. Right. That's just my okay. You know, but they have guess. they have a draft. I think agreement. they have they have a a draft a draft from Andy. And they've had that. I think they've that's had a that pretty draft. reasonable hypothesis. And I think they've had that draft. That, that's a pretty. Oh, okay. I mean, we, Andy and I finished preparing the first draft. In, I thought that was the case. January, I wasn't sure. In, early February. And, and so the developer was kind of inquiring about that at the planning commission. Yeah, and actually, actually, when Peter and I went to the WSA meeting in January or February, the developer of that mm. housing project mm -hmm. was there as well, okay. essentially explaining to WSA that the project was seemed to be contingent upon yeah. public sewer being installed in, be in the town. Smaller lots. Right. Yeah. They could not uh, put on lot systems over that, in that in, within that development. How big are the lots? Like 9,000 square feet. Yeah it's, yeah, it's very small. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, next item for discussion is the Stonecroft Village Deed for Open Space Lot Number 215. This lot contains all the open space property in Stonecroft Village. Section number eight, which fronts William Penn Boulevard, has been conveyed to the Stonecroft HOA when it should have been conveyed and deeded to Marion Township. Um, Attorney McFarlane has spoken to Landmark about splitting the deed to correctly identify Marion Township as owner of that portion of lot 215 and is still waiting to hear back from them. Right, so I, I actually spoke with Attorney Eshelman, who is counsel for Landmark today. Uh, he said he was waiting to get a new exhibit and legal description for the area of land that will be conveyed by corrected deed back to the township. He did say that he would follow up with Landmark's engineer in the next couple of days and expects to hopefully have a corrected deed draft for me to review within the next two to three weeks. Thank you. Hopefully by the next meeting, township has right away back. The right back. <laughs> yeah. I have a question for you about that. It could be till later. It's just sure. like a housekeeping type of a thing. All right. All right. The next item for discussion that we have is the emergency management coordinator report. Um, John uh, apparently stepped out. He had to take a phone call. Mm -hmm. um, he said he has nothing to report at this time. Um, so if he steps back in at some point, we need to give him some time at the end. Uh, the next item is the maps for the emergency management coordinator. Um, I know John has spoken to you and uh, he is going to uh, review what he thinks he needs. He thinks he may be able to eliminate some of those uh, maps, but okay. hopefully he can catch you here at some point so he knows okay. um, um, what he needs. All right. Yeah, I had summarized everything. So yeah. whatever needed to come out, Thank whatever you. he wants. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item is the Creekview Dairy Operation, which is 952 Route 419. They have made all of the necessary improvements, but still need to submit the NOT for the MPDS permit to Jason Rickards at BCCD. Any further comments? I believe all the construction is done. Out? They're waiting, uh, um, they had surveyed it. So they're, last I heard, they're waiting to, or they're in the process of um, preparing the as built plans that need to go along with that NOT. Thank okay. you. So have we, have we had any contact with them? Do we know that? They're, they're yeah. still working at that? Yes, they are still working at that. That's the latest. Okay, okay. very good. As long as they're, they're staying on top of it, because I know that's lingered for a bit, but if they're making progress, even small progress, I'll, I'm happy with that. At least the construction is done and uh, appears to be stabilized with some photos that were shared. Uh, once the NOT and everything submitted for County Conservation, I've asked them to also submit to the township so we can start. Um, you know, working on the close out of the project from the town side also. Okay. Thank you. Anything further, Peter? No, okay. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the visuals with the head nods. It helps. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. The culvert projects, um, the installation of the precast concrete box culverts and related site improvements at Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, and Marion Drive South and the paving and guide rail improvements at Riker Road. Uh, we'll need to authorize um, Chuck here to prepare bid documents and advertise. So I guess I'll make the motion to, I'll uh, make the motion for uh, Engineer Hess to prepare the bid documents for the following improvements. The installation of the precast concrete box culverts and related site improvements at Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, Marion Drive South, and the paving and guide rail improvements at Riker Road. And I had shared with you Wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Oh, I need to add on and to advertise. Let's so make, make okay. a second. Oh, okay. Um, I'm uh, making a motion to authorize Engineer Hess to advertise for those bids. Thank you. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. And I had shared a draft of that advertisement language, and I think the time frame we're looking to. <laughs> 
um, because you know we're in the really the upstart of the construction season, mm -hmm. we wanted to give uh, a, a reasonable bid period so that we could get contractors to participate. If, if we compress it, you know, within a week or two weeks of a bid period, meeting all the advertising requirements, that may not, you know, somebody may not have time to get out, look at it, get their bid together and so forth. So we wanted to give an extended bid period with the idea of getting, um, and, and that would happen during May and part of June. And so at the June meeting, we would hopefully have bids available um, for the board to consider get those projects done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I think it's just for adding on to that, I think it's very important to do it this way based on what we, the conversation that we had with Charlie, seeing as uh, PennDOT views this all kind of collectively as one big project, that in order to kind of line up with what the expectation is that we, we kind of change our, our thought process a little bit and, and do it that way. Yeah, and, and Peter, to that same effect, you know, as we start preparing the bid documents, which we already have, you know, we have to consider putting it in a PennDOT form or, or more of a, a, a standard form. Um, so I had reached out to Charlie and I left a message with him the other day, and I have not heard back from him yet. I just want to check and make sure that there's no aspect of this project now that's going to be bid. And if he reviews the bid documents, is there still any potential? I, I doubt it because I think we kind of shut that door mm -hmm. because yeah. all the box culverts were not. But, but again, if there's any aspect or any component, mm -hmm. I just felt it was worth mentioning because we are going to bid these projects now. Thank you. And we I can, just we can, yeah, we can certainly inquire with him, but I think he was pretty resolute on because the, the box culverts are kind of the, the, main, the main piece of the project and they were unfortunately not spec to PennDOT standards for the, the, the sub-publications of 408 that we're, we're kind of out of luck. Yes, yeah. and and you are correct. You know, he was pretty pretty adamant, but again, I felt now that some time has lapsed and it was at least worth, uh, you know, checking in with him to mm -hmm. make sure that Thank there's you. no ability to do that. And, and part of my reasoning for that was too, the board had asked me to look into making a reapplication for dirt and gravel low volume road funding for the Marion Drive South project. And I had uh, met with uh, Berks County Conservation District to review um, uh, with them the parameters that they were looking at because you had made the township had made application in 2019 and I believe again in 2021. And the unfortunate thing is the dirt gravel low volume road program was updated July of last year. And when they updated it, they changed some of the parameters that they want. And it's actually a little different than even DEP. But if you want the funding, you have to do it the way they for the dirt gravel low volume road. <laughs> And they had some minimum width requirements for the culvert because they wanted to match the stream bank. Width. The culvert, as it was already built, fabricated, and is waiting for us to install it, was at 11 feet. But according to their criteria, they wanted it to be another nine inches wide. I tried to um, work towards an exemption of that because it was so close. But their program requirements now are very adamant. And now actually that is one of the exemption criteria that they absolutely will not waiver on. The other aspects were they want the, the culvert um, buried, the bottom of the culvert buried even more than DEP does because they want the stream channel to, to be you know, there and not just a concrete surface. Um, so that shrinks the hydraulic opening a little bit. And they also have a requirement that it, we can't have the 100-year flow go more than 80% of the height of the box. So different parameters for whatever reason, environmental stabilization, um, whatever that program is. But unfortunately, it, this would not qualify for that. Yeah. And Thank you. my my limited understanding of this program is that the standards are more costly than any amount of grant funds that you would get. Okay. Sometimes. 
Yeah, because because they're you know you would have to make the box a little bit bigger to meet their criteria. So yes, you are overpaying than what you would really need just for under DEP. And I find it very odd that two <laughs> state entities, in, in essence, have conflicting criteria. Um, and you know the other complexity, which we could have got past if the funding would have been available, was that we would have had to go back and amend the general permit that was already issued for this structure because we were changing some of those parameters. But that that was a small aspect, uh, and I think it would have been worth the funding. But unfortunately, I, we could not get this um, project qualified under their new policy and design directives. So I'm sorry to. to share that news with you it's unfortunate but at the end of the day it is what it is yep yeah and again they just updated that july of last year and that was right about the time i think you had <laughs> going out for bid, so you would not have been able to probably accommodate at that time so yeah okay all right i guess just as an aside um and i apologize it should have been under the treasurer's report just a, uh, to but Jim, no. Uh, last meeting, we had talked about uh, designating the ARP funds towards the culverts. Um, when it came down to filing the paperwork, and uh, uh, Jim, Peter was kind enough to come down and help me. Peter just looked at me and said, why are we doing it this year? Let's just do it for next year. This way, all the funds get designated at one time rather than filing a report for this year and for next year. So because we know we're going to use all the ARP funds within this year, for all the culverts, um, we didn't file any projects for this year under the ARP filing requirements. We're going to just designate it for this for the 2023 year upcoming, Jim. So just to let you know. Does that mean? Yeah. Okay. yeah. If, if, yeah the, if, the fiscal. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Chuck. Go, 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 go. Just going to say, if, if you know, so, we're bidding the project mm -hmm. and it gets awarded. You know, we're going to have to give some time frame for this to get mm -hmm. done probably mm -hmm. nine months or so because mm -hmm. of the three different sites mm -hmm. so if any of that work gets done in this year mm -hmm. the contractor wants paying mm -hmm. it does that provide an issue no not at all because okay. we received a little over two hundred thousand okay. dollars we know it's going to cost two hundred thousand dollars because each each of the culvert boxes themselves are that's probably gonna, we're going to hit that threshold okay. of culvert boxes gotcha. themselves so Peter's like, why are we going to report out only half of right. the, the, the usage just due to one fell swoop? Because the paperwork was cumbersome to say the least. <laughs> so yeah, so Peter was kind enough to help me stop getting any more gray hairs while looking at it. So he goes, why don't we just do this next year? All the yeah. funds will be used in one year and and we're done. Yeah. So, so I anything think, that happens yeah. this year, we just come yeah. out general funds. And uh, absolutely, and absolutely. So, okay. And, right. and the and funds are there, so. And so the, the fiscal year for that report is March to March. Yeah. And uh, the general assumption, I had the same kind of assessment on that as you did, Chuck, that if we, even if we put it out to bid, it potentially could be some of the stuff this year, but a lot of it would be happening potentially after the next fiscal year. Right. Yeah. Right. So it, at the culvert, the boxes themselves exceed, you know, so, so we know that the money is, is spent. So it's just a matter of filling out the report. Okay. So... And, and one other follow-up on that, I, I do want to touch base with Monarch because right now they are storing um, mm -hmm. the box culverts and I want to make sure, I want to make them aware of what we're doing now with bidding the projects and that it could be six to nine months until we're asking them mm -hmm. to deliver them. Which I don't anticipate that being a problem, but again, I want to check and make sure and make sure that's all lined up. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I, I'm really hoping and this is me being possibly optimistic, but I'm hoping when we get the, the bid out there that we have somebody who is able to start the work sooner rather than later, we could actually potentially get the other three in before close of season 2023. Yeah, that would, that would be ideal. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. It would depend on how, 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 what contractor we get or how many responses we get. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, next item is uh, to extend the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Nothing new there, unless you uh, have something. There is. Ways. We've been working on that. I, okay. I do have a I, literally as I was walking out the door today to come to the meeting. I do have a little sketch. It's small. I just made a small printout. I think what I'll do is follow up 
um, and email that to the township because uh, I'd like to have, you know, the road crew see that, see mm -hmm. what we're doing. Um, again, that is installing a, a, a storm pipe along Marion Drive in very close proximity to an existing gas line. The purpose of this uh, storm sewer section would be to, um, you know, alleviate some flooding problems mm -hmm. there. Uh, the other thing is uh, if I want to make sure that I, I don't think the value of this is going to require public bidding, but it's certainly going to require soliciting free quotes mm -hmm. if the township does not self-perform that. And I think it's kind of leaning towards getting a contractor in right. to, to do this work. So, mm -hmm. you know, my goal was to set up the plan that basically the plan becomes a, um, the bid doc, a quote document, if you will. And, um, we get a contractor on board, but the, the, the expense of this is probably, you know, 10 to 25,000, maybe mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. Uh, we were just pulling the numbers together on that today. The other aspect is that to share the plans with UGI and make sure, because um, I'm not, the, the plan, the survey that was done, the diameter of that gas main is not known, mm -hmm. uh, at least it's not identified. So I want to make sure and then also see if UGI has any records on the, their, the actual depth of that mm -hmm. uh, because we're going to be so close. If, the more information we have where that gas line is, the better it's going to be um, during construction so we don't um, have any problems. And it's smooth sailing, hopefully. Chuck, as so, part of this, can you contact Charlie Parrish and make sure that we're in compliance yeah, with uh, that, the road standards so that we can use the liquid fuels money for this. You got that. Yep. That's, that's certainly on the list too, to make sure that, you. Um, you know, I would share that draw, you know, after I get some information on UGI, but, um, could even ahead of time, maybe share that with Charlie and, and make sure it's going to qualify for, for the use of liquid fuels. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next item is line painting. Um, I guess if we want to do this through the Berks County Cooperative Purchase Council, the quantities need to be submitted by June 1st. Um, are we always okay. stuck with the same you, person? You don't. You should okay. Find the contract by what okay. you're going to do soon because they're planning their work for the summer. Yeah, Peter, this has uh, been your thing with the line yeah, uh, when I'm back in front of When I'm back in front of my computer, I have the, the road plan drawn out okay. from the the prior years that we've done done this and i just have to look and see which zone we're on and we paint lines in that section or specifically i think there's two there's two zones for line painting one for road work every year and we rotate so okay i'll look and see what that is and see what the measurements are because i measured out every single road so we know we know definitively zones let's say one and two equals this number of linear feet for okay. white for and you've got double yellow uh -huh. yeah we've, we've got the data in place i just don't have it in front of me yeah as long as we don't have to use the same company. How many phone calls did you make last year? I think I made six. Uh, I probably like at least a dozen. So so as long as we could use a different contractor, I think I'd be happy. All right. Um, next item is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, we haven't really received any other communication from uh, Phil Fraga at the Cohen Law Group. Just waiting to hear something from him. He has pretty much no updates for us. He was going to send us an email kind of detailing uh, some of the things he was working on, but I haven't heard from him. So, all right. Uh, next item is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403 Amendments. This is the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. There's a possibility that other municipalities will want to join in on this. The Heidelberg Township Secretary will be scheduling a meeting for the Western Berks Joint uh, Planning Commission. I had a telephone call from the North Heidelberg. Excellent. I thought there was an email about today that there was a meeting set. Yeah, the, okay, get that. the joint the joint planning commission will meet on uh, it's, a, it's a spam May, May 18th, 7 p.m. Okay. May 18th, 7 p.m. Yeah. At Heidelberg. Yes. And then it's seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. And Peter and Jim are our people. Okay. okay. All right. Next item is the, are the computers and cybersecurity. Um, currently, we need to have all of our computers hooked up to the server in the file room and install QuickBooks on the treasurer's computer, which sits in the other room, which we used to call the AA room. 
We did receive a quote from Everly Systems. Um, Peter was kind enough to review this quote, as well as look into Microsoft Teams, and it's Peter's opinion that he feels comfortable hooking everything up and doing the work himself so that we don't have to have an outside contract. So at this point, no motion is needed because we're not making any decisions on that particular quote. Is that correct? Yes. So the one thing that I just want to add in for everybody's clarity, and Irene, for your peace of mind, I'm going to try this weekend to get in and run the lines over. Um, the proposal that we got was very much geared around a larger entity yes. and something that is more, I'll say, commercially frequented. One of the items in there was a sonic wall firewall. We don't need that. That's a, a, like a $4,000 appliance that would really not do us any bit of good. Um, there was also a whole bunch of uh, subscription and maintenance plan things in there that, again, we really would have no need for. It's just it's a large cost for, for almost no utility in our use case. So I'll, I'll give you guys kind of the high-level overview on that. I'll make sure everything gets hooked up. But uh, the, the first baby steps that we need to take are getting all the computers connected, the, the, the equipment moved over into that other room, mounted on the rack, and we need to get a, a 0365 subscription so that we can start backing up to the cloud. Yeah, thank you. I, I guess to me, my, my general understanding is, and this is this is true of every company that I've contacted, there's, it, it's kind of overkill for, for the small agency that we are, but we do need some protections and we do need to move forward as far as protecting ourselves, because we do have data that needs to be protected. And I would say at least once a week, you see something in the news where an agency is hacked and that, and that sensitive material is released or it's ransomed. And it would be quite a pity if that would happen to us because there are funds, there are social security numbers, et cetera. There's, there's a lot of information. I guess that could lead me on to the next um, part of the agenda is cyber insurance. We did receive a quote from the Seltzer Group Partners uh, they're for Cowbell Insurance, and I think that quote was a little over for $2,100 a, a year. Is that correct, Sue? Mm -hmm. Something like that. It, w it wasn't terribly expensive, $2,000. Uh, $2, um, and I think that's something that we do need to consider and we do need to implement. I need to review that a little bit more clearly. And, of course, Jim, I'd like you to take a look at that policy. Um, I don't know if you've had time to do that. Any I response? Will. Okay, thank you. So um, are you guys okay if we hold off on approving that at this time? Yeah, I, I would say let's look at that in further detail. Yeah. And I want to I want to actually seriously sit down and look at what the, the general risk profile is. I know you see a lot of stuff in the news, but yes. um, to be to be blunt, we're we're fairly far off the radar. We're not a we're not a big bank, we're not a credit card company. We're not a, yeah. a, a large government entity. The risk is still there, but it is. I, I, I guess in, in that instance, I, I, I disagree because um, speaking to my sister, um, she had an instance where her friends had a small accounting firm. And when she walked into the bank, the bank said, oh, you know, we're ready to open that account for you. And uh, she said, what are you talking about? So she was hacked and apparently they got hold of enough data to create or to convince the bank who they did routine banking with that this was legit. So I'd hate to see that happen to us. I really would. Agreed, agreed, agreed. But again, this is, even if it's a small business, this is still a profit yeah. generating entity that has a, a web presence meant for advertising. We don't, right. we don't have the same risk profile. Um, not saying but we shouldn't do it, but I, I'm, I'm. But there's funds that are there and I, and, and we need to make sure we need to take all steps that are available to us to adequately protect that. And because we're aware of a problem, I think it's important to address it properly and make sure state proper safeguards are in place. Agreed, agreed. I'm just saying we should look very carefully yeah. about what's covered in that policy. And for, ideally yeah. I have two other policies for comparison or quotes for comparison. Absolutely, absolutely. We went with Seltzer Group because they, they are our insurer. Um, mm -hmm. Wow, so Brandon is posting, for everyone's awareness, Pennsylvania has more cyber attacks than any other state in the nation. Yay, for Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, Brandon, thank you very much. We're, we're number one. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. something, I know, it, it's something that, that just really just was brought to my attention through CLE, of all things, and I, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. So 
definitely this needs to be discussed and we need to take action on it so but thank you guys and thank you peter all right yeah, so everyone... Irene, if you rather than eating up more time on the meeting if you want me to give you a call at some point i can explain some of the the things that are, are mitigating actions that we can take um for preventing uh yeah. malfeasance like this there's very simple things we can do um honestly something as simple and as low cost as setting up a localized proxy that way if there is somebody um because speaking from coming from financial institution things one of the biggest uh, vectors of an issue like this is insider threat somebody yep. who works there mistakenly clicking an email or answering a text message or or something that is seemingly legit but it is actually malicious in nature so yes and we, we definitely need to set up um annual if not biannual training for in-house personnel just to go through the motions over phishing schemes etc i agree mm. um, yeah, and it's it's not even just email phishing but it could be text message phone calls there's there's a number of different avenues that that people take to to perform either a certain level of social engineering or you name it uh, in order to get the the information required to execute something like that so we'll we'll look at it we'll, we'll check all the boxes i agree that cyber insurance isn't a bad idea but let's again let's be prudent let's look at it in, in its totality and make sure that we're not um putting up fort knox necessarily when we don't have to or if we don't have to or if we shouldn't so thank you all right um, next item is the 412 Water Street property. Attorney McFarland sent a letter to the heirs of Edna Marderness about purchasing the property, and he received a reply that the property is not for sale. Um, next item is the building and property renovations and demolition. So one of the specialty contractors, the Whitmer Group from Mount Joy, met on... on um, uh, January 17th to evaluate the brick wall above the garage that is bowing out. They could put a Band-Aid on it for $24,978 or um, repair the building from the second floor windows down to the garage door for $68,563. Um, and the same... Well, uh, thinking about possibly demolishing the building and building a new building on this site, um, I had called a number of demolition and salvage companies. We received one quote from Empire Services for $171,903 with a $10,000 allowance for removal and storage of items. And a quote was received from Complete Environmental Services for asbestos abatement in the basement for $3,350. We're still waiting for quotes from other uh, demolition and salvage contractors. So again, it's that same problem I've had again and again and again about calling people, people getting back to us and not getting numbers. And so I'm gonna try to focus my energies and efforts towards this during the summertime um, when I'm hoping my schedule is freed up a little bit and, and Peter, I'm counting on you to get that computer hooked up in the AA room so that I could be here simultaneously when Sue and Linda are here this way. I have Sue's my my right hand person. I can't function without her. So, I, um, so it, it's a matter of making more phone calls. Um, yeah. so no motion so, at this. Yeah. I have a question. So, yeah. Colin, at what point are we? legally allowed if we so try to solicit a number of quotes and we only come back with one or two what what point are we allowed by statute to to move forward with one of those options that we have i don't i don't know off the top of my head peter it's okay. Okay. um i think i think that the second class township code just requires you to attempt to get three quotes but i'm not sure i can follow up Okay. So, Irene, I agree that we should, now that the spring season is upon us, go back to making some phone calls and see if we can't get some more interested parties. Um, yeah. But, uh, again, no motion needed at this time, like you said, but I think we should also kind of turn our attention towards uh, more finalization of what we're looking for in yes. the building. Um, yes. And starting to look for grants so that we, we don't <laughs> plan on knocking the building down before we have a uh, an actual available funding source to put it back. Yes. 
I guess the other part of that too is um, as, as I've been going through this process, I've been learning more. There are, there are companies that will manage things A to, A to Z, like project management companies. So that's something else that we need to look at also. So if we have a, a building design, it's reaching out to one of these companies and say, hey, this is what we want to do. This is all the information. You know, how would you go about doing it and getting quotes from an organization like that as well? So instead of piecemealing it yeah. together like I have and, been. And I think segueing into the next mm -hmm. agenda item, I did bring tonight, we, we took a look at, you know, the property here. Mm -hmm. And using the building floor plan that we had before, we can fit it on this site. Okay. So if that's the case, you know, you might, as you work through the design of the building, mm -hmm. garage, salt shed, all that stuff, you know, it could be put out to bid that a contractor, a general contractor comes in and does everything. Yes. Demolishes the building, mm -hmm. builds a new one, mm -hmm. and then other site improvements mm -hmm. to go with it. So I do have a plan I'm going to leave here Excellent. for you guys to look at. I can also email that to you, um, especially for our, our board members that are traveling right now. Um, I, I was encouraged that I think things fit on here. Um, it is tight because of the narrowness of the lot as it fronts uh, Water Street. And you can see on the plan there, you know, the yard area um, um, on the property we just mentioned there at 412 Water Street, you know, even a portion of that property would afford you some more parking. Because uh, right now, that's probably the limiting factor, and I didn't run the numbers to see if we have enough parking yet. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to, to put it in front of you folks that that's an option. It's a buy, It looks like a viable option okay. um, versus, you know, purchasing raw land somewhere mm -hmm. um, because that would certainly add cost to it. You know, whether raw land would be more expensive or less mm -hmm. expensive than the demolition cost mm -hmm. as a whole. You know, mm -hmm. That's something else to take into consideration. But mm -hmm. um, Would it be worth approaching the estate of, of Edna Modernus about if they're not interested in selling the property outright, subdividing a small piece of it to increase I, our I, lot size just enough? I, I, Peter, didn't get any impression that the heirs of Mrs. Modernus were at all interested in any, selling any or, or selling a portion or all of the property. Okay. Okay. That's unfortunate, but okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and getting like uh, on site, like storage um, units, uh, getting like a temporary office things, those things are quite easy because there's so many companies that do that. It would just trying to best assess our needs which would mean we'd have to really go through all the materials that we have in the building and determine what is ours, what items can be gotten rid of and what items need to be just packed up and stored away. So getting those uh, trailers, the office trailers or all that kind of stuff during the construction period is really, there's so many companies that are out there that are willing to do that. So yeah, that's not, that's not even, I don't see that as much of an issue. So the yeah. biggest thing is having an accommodation for public meetings while yeah. we're under construction and either asking, as we pleasantly found out, the school district will allow us to um, utilize their spaces, which is very nice, uh, and just figuring that out as we go along. And I think, uh, Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, when we call the school district, it's just basically getting on their calendar. Mm -hmm. So we could, if we know exactly when we would have to, when we have meetings, we could, we could do that at the beginning of the year and, and get on their calendar. And that would be a nice accommodation for us, so. So, and there's three schools in our, excuse me, four schools, West, East, the uh, middle school and the high school. So, you know, we'd, we'd hopefully be able to um, meet that requirement for the public meetings. So, West, West yeah. West is the cheaper road. Yeah. 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 I would say Conrad Weiser West Elementary is probably the closest and the cheapest, right. if I recall, from right. the, the email that right. went out. Yeah. So, I think... Um, once we're able to kind of finalize an idea over what we want in the building, again, I'm going to focus my efforts more this summer as far as getting a general group rather than having piecemeal. I mean, I was a general, my husband and I were generals on a house building project. It wasn't that difficult, but that wasn't a very complicated thing. But if we're working with a group that's going to be our general and manage everything, that might make it a little bit easier for grant applications, et cetera. And, and again, it all, boil, it all boils down to money. If we don't have the money, we can't do it, it, it really hinders on, on putting in place the items that we need to put in 
to building to get as much funding as we need to. Um, I did reach out to the bank a while ago. Uh, they're telling me, you know, like there are, there's the possibility of financing, et cetera, but money, money is at the top of that, that list there. And we have to see what we can do. And if, and if it's a no go, it's a no go. And that's that. So. Yeah. I wouldn't even say it's a no go. It's a, it's a hiatus until we do find the funding. Yeah. Cause we know we need yeah. to do something like we can't, right. we can't tread water on this for, for terrible right. too. Right. You know, you can base things. Yeah. And all yeah. the building set it up that you can get in from there. Um, so you, are you interested in, in having a contractor, a general contractor come in and help assist? I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that's probably going to okay. be the easiest thing to do. If you know of any groups, yeah. that's, I, I met someone at work um, that gave me a name. Um, and so if if you know someone, I, I think throw it my thing. way. Um, you yeah. know, two or three companies yeah. to get some interest and, yeah. and help them in that um, pre-construction phase. Absolutely. With, with, uh, planning and, and cost and help guide right. a little bit. And they may be, know about grant processes that we yeah, don't know about. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Um, Especially I, agencies I that think, work with municipalities. Yeah, yeah. right. And, you know, so one key is really, you know, honing in on what final plans yeah. going to be. So I think this site plan is going to help you with that. And you mentioned that Beverly was here um, representing the adjacent property owner. So I don't know if there's, do you have any insight if they'd be interested in this? No. There's no decision that Okay. Because, you know, the, the, the township could take on the act of doing a, like an annexation plan just to buy a piece of the yard next to it. Okay. Right, right. Um, and and we, we understand that. I guess it would just be something that if you could relay back to your group and see if there would be any interest in, and I don't know exactly how much of the yard area, you know, it, it might just be 10 feet, it might be 15 feet, but, it, you know, even if they're just open to the idea would help us to take that into consideration and see if we can make this property work for the long-term goals of the township to build a new uh, community center, really. Yes, yes. I mean, see, that's the goal, yeah. you know, turn yeah. it over and have something viable within this community that the residents can use. Yeah, and as yeah. much as I hate to see this old school go, right. this is a great location because yeah. you're in town. Yeah. You know, you're not out on 422, it's convenient, you can walk here, what have you. Question for that. Is it part of this old building as well? Nope. Nope. I checked on that first year I was here. It meets zero criteria. I called all... It, well, because no one of any historical significance graduated here. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know Sue did graduate, so so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there was no um big historical event that occurred on this location, so I I checked with federal and state level, nothing, nothing. And I think I actually even asked Matt, Matt Barnhart, who is really into all that stuff. He had nothing further. So I reached out. I printed up all the information. I had it on the desk. No one else wanted to read it but me. So we meet no criteria. Trust me. If there was funding, if there's any way to salvage this building, to, to restore it to what it was, but it still doesn't solve our problem because it doesn't make it functional. Right. It doesn't function well for what the purposes it currently needs. So, and that's the, the sad other, part. Yeah. The other thing to consider is that the building has already been substantially modified. So even if it had met some of the criteria, it still wouldn't qualify for funding because of, I'll be blunt, what they did in the garage. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I there's, there's so many things that changed. I of windows again, <laughs> you know. So yeah. All right. Anything further, guys? Nope. Let's move on to the next item, please. Very help with that, Chuck. Um, we did receive a complaint from the residents at 3955 Wintersville Road at the corner of Stouchburg and Wintersville, complaining about the tractor trailer trucks going through their yard. Again, Chuck is kind enough to suggest we install guardrails or curbing or concrete barriers. If you want to elaborate and, on and, that. And and actually I have some other ideas and options that came out um, for a, a concrete island to help channelize uh, vehicles there and really make it geometrically difficult to make the right turn. And just last week, Peter and I had some discussions about 
um, installing some low cost um, flexible post delineators around that intersection to really further um, enforce the no right turn and hopefully discourage people from making it. And, and I think that would be, in my mind, that, you know, because it's so low cost would be a, a first step. But yeah. I know Peter was going to try and meet with the property owners to see, you know, what, what might be um, favorable in their view because it is in their front yard, mm -hmm. so to speak. Any, any, any of these uh, approaches to, to help keep vehicles from tracking through their front yard, but we certainly want to put something there that's going to be uh, acceptable to them. So, yeah. So, my, my plan of attack after talking to you, Chuck, I didn't get a chance to meet with them this week because I got. Uh, last minute travel with work that I had to had to do, but uh, I'm going to present to them the, the the idea of the bollards first to see if the the low cost minimally invasive solution solves the problem. If it does, fantastic. If it doesn't, if people just start driving over the bollards, then we go to the next thing in the list, which is that traffic island. And if yep. that still doesn't do it, then we we have to seriously consider the big guns, which is putting out the 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 high curbs with yep. the, the guide rail. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you both. Anything further on that? Nope. Just uh, I'll I'll keep both of you apprised of the outcome of meeting with them, but I'm going to reach out to them once I'm back in Pennsylvania and see if they're going to be home one of the nights this week. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item. Uh, there's a grant workshop which is hosted by a state representative, state representative Barry Joswiak, which is facilitated facilitated by the PADCED on May 4th uh, at 11 a.m. at the Reading Regional Airport. We have to RSVP by May 2nd. I have to double check my availability. I don't know if I'm available on that day. Did we lose you, Peter? Nope, I'm here. I'm just checking my calendar. Turns okay. off my video when I do that. No, let, let us know when you have to leave. And uh, as long as I've got Jim, we're good. So, I've, right. I've still got time. I think we're far enough through the agenda that we can, we can make it before I got to get on the plane. All right. Um, so were you the only one potentially attending? I don't know. I have to check my schedule. So. I was going to volunteer my time because I'm interested in, you know. Yeah. If, uh, if, I can get, if I can get off of work, I'll join you, Chuck, because I'm actually genuinely interested in attending that. Okay. I have to check. So it's the potential of the three of us. Perhaps, okay. yeah. If okay. I'm not working. Um, we don't need to make a motion on that. No, but you do yeah, have RSVP yeah. by May 2nd, yeah. so that's yeah. coming up. Yeah, so I'll know. Yeah. I'll check my schedule tomorrow. All right. Next item is the Wise Annexation Sketch Plan. Um, they would like to take land from 704 Marion Drive and add it on to 720 Marion Drive to make that lot approximately one acre. Our Planning Commission has reviewed this but has not given a recommendation yet. We also have not received any comments from Berks County Planning Commission yet. So we did after. Oh, we did. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's the Berks County Planning Commission review came in. Um, nothing of any substance. Um, and so this plan will be coming before the board here at okay. some point. Um, and I would say it, it, the county actually had this property as a historic. <laughs> it was on the historic yeah. list. Really? Um, yeah. The, the, the one home is sitting on like 0.2 acres, a very small lot. Mm -hmm. And the reason for the lot add on is really, and it's owned by uh, Jacob Wise. Wise. Jacob Wise, yeah. He, he owns both properties today. Mm -hmm. So he's making this land swap to get that 0.2 acre up to an acre to allow for room for future replacement septic system if need mm -hmm. be. Okay, so it, it, it does make sense from that standpoint. Alone, really. Um, so again, you'll you'll see that plan coming before you here probably next month. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Alden on sixth sketch plan. A associate, uh, Mr. Louis Hurst, proposes to build sixty three single family detached dwelling units on this parcel, which is in Heidelberg Township, Marion Township, and Womelsdorf Borough. Planning Commission has only reviewed this one time and has not made any recommendations yet. So any further updates on that? Uh, I, yeah. I, Heidelberg will also be reviewing this plan. Okay. Yeah. They did yeah. not waive, waive review last night. Okay. Okay. So yeah. the full review. Yeah. They, <laughs> the board said it would possibly defer to Marion Township on stormwater. 
But okay. otherwise, I get the impression that yeah, they would take a full yeah, review. Yeah, that's fine. You know, that they're entitled. Yeah. And and a small piece of it uh, touches uh, Wilmer's North Borough at the intersection. Um, so the planning commission, you know, it was an informal review. It was really just a developer coming in and, and presenting it. And you know, the interesting thing is that there are three municipalities involved in this. And the layout of the development has, you know, really the only street doing a loop. And that loop goes through a portion of, of Heidelberg Township. Um, that side of the Heidelberg portion of the site is landlocked, really. There's no street frontage. So mm -hmm. you have to come through Marion Township. To, to that end, Heidelberg does not want any maintenance responsibilities over that roadway. Hmm. So, and that's that's one of the things to work out, you know, even though it would be located in Heidelberg Township, could Marion Township take dedication on that road? And what would be the ramifications for liquid fuels then in the future? But we will have to talk about. The other complexity, of course, as we mentioned a little earlier, in it at is, is sewer service. Yeah, that. Easy use. So, yeah. How would that impact us? Is that, yeah. Is that the yeah, that's kind of what you're thinking because you're coming in, you know, Marion Township as a road, you're not going to lift your plow, continue around the loop, drop your plow and continue to <laughs> Marion Township. You know the phone would just ring off the hook then. So, and it does make some sense for Marion Township to take over that whole road. We just want to make sure, you know, that liquid fuels could be assigned to Marion Township somehow. And I'm not sure how that would be, but... I do talk to Charlie Paris this week. Um, I'll probably just mention him that and see. He, I'm sure it's come up before. And there's got to be a way to do that. Um, and then, of course, you know, the street construction standards, Heidelbergs are vastly different, which I haven't looked up, you know, coming to some amenable standard that certainly mm -hmm. satisfies Marion Township. But, well, but so I, I, mean, I, I would think if it's our roadway, they would waive yeah. <laughs> their requirements and it would meet Marion's requirements. I, yeah. I agree, Peter. Yeah, the, the only issue, with Peter, if Heidelberg for some reason had a heavier roadway specification, you know, or beefier road, maybe we would want to adopt that <laughs> for this well, development. That, we'll that's see. fair, but at that point, we might want to review our standard if if that's the case yeah. and see if we're yeah. we're, yeah. we're maybe overzealous in some respects, but. I agree with you. There's got to be some way of straightening out the liquid fuels. I'm sure there's, there's a mechanism in place or there's an agreement that can be made about that. And I'd imagine if they're giving up the, or they're, if they're deferring responsibility for the roadway, they should be deferring the authority on the criteria for the roadway as well. Yep. And so with the um, the sewer aspect, you know, there's the, the other thing where, where Marion Township can pick up 63 customers um, for sewer in addition to all the other customers you're now going to have. Um, so that would make sense. And I would assume the intermunicipal agreement, you're, you're buying certain <laughs> sewer capacity for Wilmersdorf at a bulk rate, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to sell that service to these customers mm -hmm. at a Marion Township rate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just it's all that, I guess, has to be worked out here. There's a lot that needs to get done. The, the, yeah. the agreement as currently drafted yeah. only contemplates providing sewer service for the requirements of the Act 513. That's, that's, that's right. The developer mentioned that there might be some additional capacity well, that would be obtained or agreed to. Not. Maybe. maybe. Okay. Well, I think what we're a separate agreement with. Uh, okay. 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 Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's covered in... Uh, I haven't seen the draft, but I, I got the impression that it wasn't explicitly covered in the agreement, but Womelsdorf was fairly confident that there was enough uh, wiggle room in the, the EDU calculation that they did to, they have capacity, it's just not explicitly, like, I'll say, purchased. There's there's some allusion in the agreement to Womels, Womelsdorf Sewer Authority providing the township with additional capacity should it make it determine that it has that capacity. That's mm. a, that's a, Roughly the language in the agreement. So it's a possibility so it, if they have it. Yeah. The language essentially puts them on notice that the township will probably need additional capacity should this development occur. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything further? Nope. That's that's good. Let's okay. move to the next item. All right.
Um, the MTCA would like to open both rooms, uh, the alumni room and the history room, on Saturday, June 3rd from 9 a.m. to 12 noon on the day of the community yard sale, and also on Sunday, June 25th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on the day of the community picnic. So as long as you guys are okay, I'll make a motion then to authorize opening of the alumni and history room on Saturday, June 3rd from 9 a.m. to 12 noon and on June 25th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. <laughs> right, next item is the uh, MTCA movie nights. I apologize, I did not receive the email. Um, oh, thank you. So, um, Kelly, do you have those dates as far as the movie nights? Oh, I have it right here. Forgive me. Um, the movie nights are Friday, June 16th, uh, July 21st, August 18th, and September 15th. May, forgive me, uh, Friday, May 26th. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. You're tiring. Okay. okay. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Thank you. Aye. <laughs> Next item is the stormwater management ordinance and fee schedule update. I don't have an update at this time. We need to sit yeah. down at the, okay. the next workshop meeting. We need to sit down and have a discussion. Yeah, okay. If, um, I could just circle back. John, did you have any comments, any report or anything? You can come up to the microphone. If you wouldn't mind catching Chuck afterwards and talking to him about the map issue also, yeah. and then you could get back to us and let us know what you want to decide. You are John Seleski, Emergency Management Coordinator for Marion Township. Thank you. Um, Chief Dronick called me the other day about the bar on 422 for wanting to know the occupancy permit, what their actual occupancy is. They've been getting some complaints at the police department. Because um, to his knowledge, they don't have anything that allows them to be operating right now. That whoever we need to send to figure that out because we don't have a fire marshal, so we can't go in and do it ourselves. And, and this has been on the radar, mm -hmm. and, and it's on our So now they list. officially have had complaints and noise complaints at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, there were a number of issues uh, that we wanted to look into. You know, uh, the zoning permit for the, the use is, is one because it's changed ownership. Number two is, is the property maintenance code compliance, which would be under craft codes. Um, and then all their other operating licenses, which at least earlier, we, the liquor license was valid, but it was due to expire here in March. So what this is going to require is for um, my code enforcement person to come out and do some investigatory work. And my goal was to have... Um, craft codes involved in that too at the same time because of getting access to the property is a little easier under the property maintenance provisions, I think, than it is as the zoning officer. So mm -hmm. because I spoke to a couple of the local fire marshals that I, I work with around the area and on um, with uh, some administrative warrants and stuff. There's a lot of ways to easily get in there. And okay. for the most part, the police would be very happy with some of the options. Um, it, so. Is it a suggestion to have the police company um i personally if whenever i would go anywhere or something like that i'd always have pd with me okay. um just because i don't yeah. trust anyone yeah but i would actually highly recommend if craft goes out that we coordinate that with the police so that the police are with okay. them so we'll we'll work on on getting a date and time schedule. Yeah, i think it was actually larry larry called me first and then i i, call, I talked to brian yeah, about yeah. it and i told him i'd bring it up here he's been on it and hearing things yeah and there's been you know, what have you yeah um, so i think it would be you know beneficial to also have the police there because 
if they see any criminal. Yeah, they said if it's like a peak time, you can empty the building and then they can card everybody as they try to go back in and see who they were serving underage, stuff like that. And so, so what I saw on the website, they have kind of peculiar hours, like opening at 4 p.m. And is that, is, do you know, is, is that bar connected to the hotel? Can't answer that. All right. Not know that. Because there's some, there's a lot in there also, like with that firewall, if there's an access there and if, what their access, their main egress does not count if there's a kitchen there. It's that main door because I'd love to, to take the measurements and what, but, it you know, is, is there okay. fixed seating? Is it, you know? And yeah, there's a number of oh, yeah. things we'd have to look at. It's a plethora. Is that something you would want to wouldn't want to be involved in that. Oh, I'd love to. You would. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I got fire inspector one and two coming up. So I? I might use that as a, uh, my case study for my, my certification. Can, can we get whomever is speaking up to the microphone, please? Yeah, I was in that building twice already. Yes. Oh, yeah. My son wanted to go there. Um, and I told him he wasn't allowed to get in that building till I checked it out. Because he has some issues once in a while, like everybody does. And so I went in the first time I went in, I ordered a meal. Um, the lounge is here. No, the small bar is in this section. And then there's tables here. And then there's a pool table here. And then you'll take a step down, and then in the back, there's a bigger bar, and then there's some casino things there, and then all of this here is tables. And when I was in there, it was it was nice and quiet, and then the next week I went in uh, and had another meal, and there were a bunch of motorcycle guys and their girlfriends or wives and whatever, they were nice, quiet, not not out, you know, making a big deal or anything. And um, as a matter of fact, I played pool with two of them. So, you know, it, it was a very nice atmosphere when I was there. So now what happens around the time? Um, they wanted to, when I was there, it was in the late afternoon, well, late or early evening. And then I said something to the one, uh, waitress and she said they're talking about opening up early in the morning possibly to have breakfast now i don't know their regular hours or anything but when i was there it was nice so what happened after that those couple of weeks after that i don't know well we can only hope it's you know a nice operating facility but the concern is really are there any code violations and I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm letting the cat out of the bag, but it's been several domestic issues they've been responding to there. Um, the noise complaints when they are there. And then uh, obviously my, my dream is to have every building sprinkler and I don't really worry about the fire side of it, but it is on the, the fire code, everything from the detection, extinguishers, egress. That, that's my, my concern. So, so but, this, this bar does have a hotel liquor license, which means that they can serve alcohol until 2 a.m., um, but people should be out of the bar by 2.30. Okay. Thank so, you. Does, I'm, I'm going to ask a potentially silly segue question. If they have a hotel liquor li license, does that mean that they are in some legal capacity connected to the hotel? Yes, they have to. They need rooms for overnight stay. Exactly, they do associated yeah. with the bar. That, and that that kind of circles back to one of the earlier questions that we had with John, or one of the earlier statements. So it has to then be connected. The, the two can't be mutually exclusive. I believe the bar is actually in the first action. <laughs> Whoever's talking, I can't hear you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That's our police officer. That's okay. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. His statement was he thinks that the bar is being rented by a different party than the hotel owner. So, 
Peter's making yeah. faces. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm not sure where that stands, where that falls in terms of like, yes, you are actually attached to a hotel or you have to be owned by the same entity for that, that liquor license to be that way. I honestly don't know. But All right, well, we'll, we'll work on scheduling. Get um, some. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. sure. It's, it's two Maybe it would be a bad idea rather than just having us mm -hmm. uh, sue or call the current person mm -hmm. and put mm -hmm. them on, put the bar on their radar. Yeah, because they then they'll do, they'll do they'll do their own investigation right. for yes. compliance with their liquor license. Yeah. So did we get any? Um, we haven't gotten any. Third hand. Yeah. Third hand. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anything further? That? Thank you, John. All right. Um, I know uh, the next item up is uh, the executive session, but I think due to the fact that we have two remote supervisors, we're just going to finish out the meeting and then terminate and then go to executive session. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. what you would want to do, Irene, is when we get to that point, just stop yep. the recording, make sure everyone has left the premises, and Jim and I will stay on the call. Absolutely. All right. So the next item is the supervisor's comments. Peter, do you have anything further? I, I only have two things. First and foremost, thank you for taking the reins in my absence. You did a, a fantastic <laughs> job of moving the meeting along. And thank you for you and Sue and everybody there for doing the, the little bit of technical troubleshooting to get the, the Zoom me uh, meeting connected. Um, the other thing was, uh, Chuck, I wanted to get a, a chance to talk to you and I just get, didn't get a chance. I'd like you to look over the original design that had gotten put together for the little like stream crossing on canal road there um i'd like your your take on that and see if that is something that we could potentially do with liquid fuels or really just in general what our options are because that that stream crossing is fairly wide and the road surface is very low is that the one where the culvert was replaced a couple of years ago mm -mm. down further it's basically right before the intersection of canal and shady cabin and every year it sinks about three inches, and every year we throw about three inches of blacktop on it. Oh, okay. So, well, that, there might be something going on there with that, uh, uh, that structure. That, that pipe is, I think, entirely gone, and every time there's a heavy Ooh. rain, it just blows through. So it, it, it's in need of some attention. It's not to okay. the point of, like, interrupting okay. traffic flow, but it might be a good candidate for some extra road work this year. I know the original price that we had gotten from like McCarthy Engineering was closer to like eighty thousand on that when it went out to bid, or if it had gone out to bid. Um, to replace I'd the culvert. Yeah, what I'd actually I want to I would like to talk to you more in depth about is if if we push into the realm of it being technically a bridge, if we did like headwalls on either side and one of those like metal graded crossings, we're talking mm -hmm. about 10, 11, maybe at most twelve feet but I don't want to do terrible things to our insurance by having a bridge uh, in the township there if, if we don't have to. <laughs> so it's um, it, it's a very low height culvert. The it's extreme, is extremely low. Basically at the stream. Yeah, that, that gets cumbersome because if the span goes over eight feet, then, then it's subject to um, PennDOT's bridge design. Um, but I'll take a look at it and um, we, we can try and be creative um, because, you know, it used to be years ago, you could put in multiple pipes and uh, accommodate something like this, but the DEP and their infinite wisdom in protecting the environment, they, they, they don't want multiple pipes anymore. They, they want one single structure that spans the stream. But in this case, with, with not having a lot of, height between the stream and the top of the road, you know, that makes it very difficult to put a structure in there um, efficiently and cost effectively. So I will add that to my radar to um, take a look at it the next time I'm here in the township or on my way home or in the morning or something on my way to work just to, to get a sense of what it is and then start looking at some, some options for what we could uh, possibly do there. Okay. Um, when that when you do do go out, give me a call. If I'm around, I'll stop by and chat with you. Okay. Well, then 
on the flip side, if you want to, once you get back, if you want to schedule something, why don't we schedule something and I'll work to your schedule when you're available. I mean, honestly, if I'm, as long as I'm not going into the office or I'm not traveling, you just let me know like, Hey, I'm going to maybe try swinging by three okay. days from now and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll make sure that I have myself booked out for an hour or something like that to meet up with you. Do you prefer, prefer morning or afternoon? Afternoon is honestly easier for me, but if you, okay. do, if you need to do morning, I can, I can make morning work. We can make afternoon work. Okay. Okay. Very just, good. Just like that, John. So you, you know the area that they're talking about. Would you want to take a look at that as club cleaning manager too? Okay. So yeah, give us a call too, because John okay. probably want to take a look at that also. So well, I can assure John whatever we do there, we have to do to make sure that we don't affect the floodplain or yeah. flood carrying yeah. capacity. But yeah. you still may want to take a look at it just right. because of the current condition of it. Yep. And if there's um, issues with it, alert you to that at that yeah. time. I guess also just like for understanding, just to understand the, the whole process. Mm -hmm. So, yep. all right. Okay. And that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Irene, you're you're next if you have comments. But, yeah, Butch was saying something. Yeah, oh, oh, I couldn't hear I couldn't hear him. I'm sorry. He went, because he can't hear you if you're not yeah. on a mic. We have that plastic pod on back of the salt shed. If uh, if we can use it. Okay, so you have some sections of plastic pipe. <laughs> I have 20 foot of it. Okay. All right. Well we could <laughs> if if it's a possibility, we would use it, but um, We'll take a look at it. It's good to know you have some pipe available. I'll make note of that. Yeah, I think unfortunately from the last time we looked at it, if we're going to comply with like the DEP rules around like stream bank yeah. distances, it's it's much wider than that pipe butch. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, um, I don't have anything uh, particular. I'm going to go over the police report because you're not here, Peter. Um, total miles patrolled was 856.5. There were 14 traffic stops, 11 citations issued, and four traffic warnings, uh, 30 security checks, and that's about it. So thank you, guys. Uh, I just, I guess as an aside, I um, ran into one of the uh, Tulpahawken Township uh, supervisors, and I had mentioned that we had talked previously about doing something cooperative with them as far as chipping into paying for an MDT for Tulpe PD. So he said they're interested in it. I just have to put together something more formal saying, hey, this is the cost. This is what we're willing to contribute towards the purchase of a new MDT. Um, are you willing to uh, come up with the other half so that they can get some more equipment? And I know John and I have been back and forth about um, other kinds of grants to get them more information. I think John, I apologize. I fell a little bit to the wayside with some um, family matters that have come up within the past couple of weeks. So I apologize. I'll try to get back on that route. So getting our police department some more assistance. So um, that's all that I have. Jim, do you have any comments? None at this time. Okay. Chuck, nope. anything? Okay. Uh, Colin? No, I'll just say that when, uh, when Landmark does prepare that, corrective deed of dedication, the township should should be accepting that deed through a resolution. Okay, so thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Sue, do you have any comments? No. Okay, Linda, no. thank you. All right, at this time then, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, Sue, if you want to keep me good on the time, I have uh, 8.59 p.m. Yep. Second. On a roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. So I apologize. We're going to have to ask everyone to exit the building because we have to hold executive session. Um, then, How do I stop Irene, the recording? Sure. So there's a record button at the bottom.